Hi folks, uh, my name is Ken Rieff. I'm here with Jay McLaughlin uh, and we're here uh, courtesy of the 400 uh, series project uh, stories and we're here today to talk about the author uh, Jonathan Bayless who uh, lived in Gloucester and who wrote here uh, born in 1926 in Arlington but spent a good portion of his life here uh, and uh, I'd like to introduce Jay welcome thank you Ken and I'm hoping that uh, we could have a couple minutes so you could tell us a little bit about yourself and we'll talk about your uh, relationship uh, with uh, John uh, and how it uh, formed over the years and some of the things that you uh, came to know about him over that time. Well I grew up in a, a suburb of New Bedford, another fish town, and uh, went to um, a, a when I started working, I went to um, Interlake Iron Corporation in South Chicago and uh, was part of a rigging repair gang there, blast furnace plant and coke plant. And uh, I had that experience in 19, let's see, that was be 1951 and 52. And then I was drafted into the Army. I uh, was in the infantry and went to o infantry OCS and I served during the Korean War in the United States, luckily, because it was an airborne division and um, they kept us in reserve. After my army service, I could go on the GI Bill to uh, any place, any college that I wanted to, and so I went to, I picked the University of California at Berkeley. Um, the, uh, my, my major was physiological psychology, but you need a doctorate to do anything in that, so I, uh, I uh, was more interested in sculpture and design and got an equivalent degree in that. Um, when I went to work in that field, um, I came to uh, New Hampshire because I had a connection with the League of Arts and Crafts director there, and I worked there for, oh, five years and had my own studio workshop, but I also did some teaching there. Um, because of a, a divorce, I had to leave New Hampshire because we used desertion as the cause. <laughs> they didn't have no fault. And I could go anywhere I wanted to. I, I picked Gloucester because I, when I came to Gloucester, it just struck me as an absolutely unique, the unique place that it is and uh, I was driving in East Gloucester and I saw a sign, uh, Beacon Marine Basin, uh, studio for space for rent and an apartment for rent. Well, uh, it was wonderful because I, my next door neighbor was Peter Anastas. And uh, that's the lead into how I met Jonathan. Right. And I'm, so I'm, my, my profession, I'm sorry, my profession mm -hmm. is uh, a woodworker, sculptor, and uh, I've designed many uh, these furniture and, and especially st complicated staircase systems. But it turns out, I mean, uh, it's where John uh, went to school at Berkeley, but you didn't know that at the time. Uh, uh, how did you first encounter John? Well, I didn't, I didn't know him uh, at Berkeley. He was a graduate student and, uh, at, and teaching. and. Um, I met him through Peter Anastas. Uh, Peter would visit my shop uh, frequently and he, he got to know me a little bit and uh, knew that I went to Berkeley and he said, hey, I want you to meet Jonathan Bayless because he was there also. So Jonathan was invited over and we hit it off. It was, um, it was amazing. We talked about, uh, both of us had listened to the Linus Pauling Edward Teller debate uh, in 1958. Uh, we, um, we remembered both staying up till 2.45 to see if the Russians, when they sh shot a, uh, a, a rocket to the moon, they were the first to, to hit the moon. And the rumor was that they were going to set up a small atomic explosion so that everybody could see what they've done. 
and we, everyone stayed up to, to watch it to see if, uh, if it happened, and it didn't, of course, luckily. Um, but anyway, we shared these things, and, and also the fact that I had gotten to know Rethrox and Patchen and Ferlin Getty when I was at Berkeley, and that um, we had that, that uh, beat literature in, in, in common. Um, and fortunately for me, Jonathan invited me to attend many uh, evenings with Charles Olson, Peter, and, and myself at Jonathan's house. They, that was absolutely fascinating. Um, uh, Olson was boisterous and emphatic and, and, and powerfully uh, um, dis dis disagreeing with the community redevelopment, what was happening to the waterfront, old houses being torn down and, and re replaced with bad architecture. Um, he, he, oh, Charles had worked for the uh, uh, Roosevelt administration and uh, was even um, asked to be postmaster general, interestingly enough. Um, I was just going to interrupt just to say, uh, so this uh, grouping, uh, Olson, Anastas, yourself, yeah. and John Bayless, how did John uh, sort of, what was his, uh, how did he fit in? What was his superpower in that, in that group? Well, it was interesting. He, he was bemused. Um, I, 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 it was interesting that he had um, punch cards that hadn't been punched, but punch cards that he would write, take notes on, and he would listen to what Peter had to say, listen to what uh, Charles had to say. And um, then in, in different places, summarize in a constructive way about what possible actions could be taken not just complaints, but what actions can be taken to make things better. Uh, this was always on his mind. How just, can we improve things? I was just going to interrupt to say for anybody in our audience uh, who's uh, under 50, doesn't know what a punch card is. Well, that was an <laughs> early computer, uh, a computer uh, method of, of uh, putting in information into an early computer. Programming, yeah. And, and yeah. programming it and yeah. then taking the information so, out. And so we'll, we'll talk about how Jonathan comes to have those with him because uh, John and computers turns out to be a, a story we can talk about a little bit. But uh, so he would be in these uh, meetings, these gatherings, yeah. they're just informal, and he'd be taking notes on these computer uh, punch cards. Yeah, and, 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 and it was not just uh, serious talk. We did a lot of drinking. <laughs> we drank, <laughs> we we drank a bottle of scotch at every meeting, um, and uh, the uh, it was very it was very cheerful and rather boisterous. Well, I'll I didn't have an awful lot to say <laughs> except I, my <laughs> end of it was to sort of thinking of how do you put concretize this? How do you how do you put this in, into some kind of action that might change things? And uh, that was my small contribution. But to, I mean, were to, people to talking in very, th they're talking in more theoretical, philosophical ways? Oh, yeah. talking about writing, talking about civic uh, goings on, talking about the Democratic Party, talking about um, uh, what's, you know, what's happening in, in, the, in the city. And uh, it was great fun, and it was a great honor for me to be there. The, uh, I, I, I consider Jonathan a, a polymath, not only in the sense of his expertise on so many things, but also his interest in mathematics. And that's, that comes out in all of his writing. And one of the, one of the most obvious things, I brought a, a little thing with me, was his interest in G Gilgamesh mm. in a... Um, what do we have there? In, well, this is an ISO um, 
uh, an isorecto tetrahedron, and that means that it's got three right angles that you can see here, and um, they are the, the corner of a square cut off, and it makes an a, uh, equilateral triangle on mm -hmm. the bottom, and these mm -hmm. are iso the, these are um, isosceles triangles, that's where you get iso, and um, it's a four-sided figure which is a tetrahedron, and Jonathan calls it a, an, an I, um, S, uh, R, uh, an I S T H, I S R H, and that if you if you if you spell it and and make uh, make make it lingual, uh, it's Earth, which is interesting enough. And this was used in Gilgamesh, not as an omelet. It was hung like this on a thong, but not as an omelet, but amulet, but as a symbol, a symbol of power, a symbol of the, the, the most uh, perfect mixture of opinions, of different influences, of culture, of challenges that Gilgamesh faced. When he, in, in his story and in Jonathan's two plays, The Tower of Gilgamesh, and, and, and that um, uh, has been performed uh, several times, but it was an example of his math. And he was interested in my use of math in my work. Uh, I, could t I showed him how I could take two points and, uh, and, uh, on a big piece of plywood or a, a glued up tabletop and make a, take a string around those points and make a perfect oval very quickly mm -hmm. and very perfectly. Another example was a, um, a, a, uh, the, the dimensions of a, of a um, golden rectangle. The golden mean. Golden mean where yep. This side is to this side as the, the addition of these two is to the next one, so that it, it, can, it just could continue around. I'm not describing it terribly well, but I showed him how if you take that angle, which is 36 degrees, then you, can, you don't have to go through the calculations. You can make it all uh, very simply uh, mm -hmm. any size you want. So we, we shared that. We went back and forth with uh, our math. And um, he, of course, his fascinating thing is with, with his math is what he did for Gortons. Um, so so he, just to stop for a second, I mean, he, while he was writing, he was also yeah. working uh, at Gortons. And uh, uh, can you give us a sense of what his function was there and yeah. how that ties into... Uh, his writing on economics and on... Yeah. Well, uh, go back a little bit. He, his experience was Navy during World War II, the end of World War II, two years. And uh, then uh, he, he worked in, in a couple of different jobs and did his t had his teaching experience in Berkeley. Um, then when he came to Gloucester, he had enough experience with computers from his Berkeley experience to, to realize that they had, I would say, some con confusion and, and, and slow operation that could be corrected by um, his, his expertise in, in setting up a computer. So they ordered a, uh, he convinced them that they ought to p pay the expense and they got an IBM 360. But I'm just uh, just to stop you for a second. I mean, you, uh, today computers are you know they're ubiquitous. Uh, yeah. uh, what year are we talking about, and how were computers uh, viewed back in that time period? Well, it was a huge machine. I remember when it first came in to uh, to Gorton's. Jonathan invited me over to look at it, mm -hmm. and it was gigantic and. Um, what they, 
do, what, the way they used it was to develop a matrix of information. Now this matrix of information is a whole series of, of demand, supply, um, uh, transportation, uh, cost of all different variables, and this whole string of what goes on in the process of making, uh, making their Gorton's product, fi the fish product. And that by using a computer, everything became practically instantaneous. This is what we would call maybe like supply chain and uh, things of that nature. Absolutely. But I mean, John, would, and I, I'm not, I'm just suggesting that he was uh, bringing the computer in to uh, help make decisions. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, instead of sort of arbitrary decisions, they were, it was, uh, it was backed up by science. He, he called it the scientific method of design coordination. And he actually wrote a very serious paper about that, which was used by, uh, by IBM uh, worldwide. But at the same time, Gortons was undergoing a very interesting rebuild of their office. And uh, he, he actually asked me if I, could, if I was interested in doing a conference table uh, and, a, and some other furniture. And I said, sure, and I made a presentation. And, and uh, <laughs> the conference table was in the shape of, of the uh, McManus um, uh, vessel the uh, adventure mm -hmm. with the but but cut off in the bow and stern but it had the that curvature of a schooner because that was a terrific way to to to, to it, 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 it <laughs> make it, um, the, the the history of the fishing industry mm -hmm. so anyway he said how much how long would it take not interested in how much it would cost how much how long would it take i said six months and he said, oh, I'm sorry, we, we're looking at six weeks. <laughs> so <laughs> I didn't get to do that. But the, uh, uh, I saw what Jonathan went through in his, uh, he actually worked with the architect and did the designs and made the, made the entire thing uh, work, even with a recalcitrant um, general contractor. But it was, it was very interesting to see that. So I just want to pause for a second here because I want to talk a little bit about Jonathan's work history. Yeah. But I also want to leave uh, some time for us to talk about uh, some of the things he wrote and what they, uh, you know, meant uh, what he was trying to tell us. Yes. So uh, he was at Gorton's, uh, but he also served as the uh, treasurer for the city of Gloucester. Yeah. Yeah. How did, how did you, uh, you know, how did you relate to him? With regard to, with regard to his employment there. Well, he also brought uh, computerization to the to city, city hall. hall. Yeah. Uh -huh. But um, it was, it was a a time when the um, the mayor wasn't always in agreement with the council. Uh, this is this is a, 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 a it can be a problem, and Jonathan made that. Um, kind of um, made things happier than they were. He was advisor to the mayor as well as treasurer, and uh, he, did, he did a huge amount for the city of Gloucester. Yeah, and so uh, again, uh, bringing together this new technology and putting it to work in business and in government and, uh, and also writing uh, these books. Uh, yeah. at the same time. So uh, how did you uh, uh, interact with him when it came to the things that he was, he was writing about and the things that he wanted to convey about his experiences? I, I have to say that I wasn't, uh, I wasn't part of that. Peter was. Charles certainly was. Mm -hmm. But I really was not part of and I had no, no input into it except that uh, I appreciated what the fun that he had. I appreciated his, um, his objectivity. I appreciated his complexity a great deal, but I, I had no, uh, no really no 
association with that, but since, except but just to enjoy it. Just to enjoy it. And so tell me what it is that uh, makes it enjoyable and what, what it was about those, uh, the, uh, the books, the Gloucester book, the Gloucester Tide, Gloucester Moss, Pro Logos. Uh, what, what was it about those that uh, captured your interest? In well, f first of all, the uh, fun of deciphering who was who um, he would uh, he would make up names that had relate uh, uh, that had uh, uh, that were related s symbolically to what he was uh, to the very real people, but made them anonymous by using a, a different name. Um, Gloucester Mass is my favorite of of the books because it's it was sort of a, a, a summary in a way, and it was a, um, uh, it had a, and it had a lot of the Gilgamesh in it. Um, the, uh, uh, Catherine put on a, a reading of, of, of one of the panels, and I was Inganu in, the, in it, um, Inganu was the name of his dog after Ibby Rex, uh, and Jonathan used to come by when I was building the, my house in East Gloucester with his dog and uh, see what I was up to and tell me what he was up to also, and, and uh, we had many nice, many, many nice visits that way, and he loved his animals, and he, he had a cat, I remember he had a cat that, that he had a, a 25 foot ramp that went up to the roof of his house so the cat could go up there and enjoy sitting up on the roof. He was great with animals. So uh, we just have a, a few minutes left, but I just uh, want the audience, uh, if possible, if you could uh, explain to them why these uh, books uh, are important and why they uh, you know, why they talk to us and, and, and maybe what it is that uh, can be gained from taking a shot at these books. These are not uh, easy books no. to read. No, no. So they're quite challenging. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and so how did you meet that challenge? Uh, I mean, you sort of have to keep going, as it were. Yeah, and you have to keep uh, a dictionary close by, a good one. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I think that uh, the, the, the relationship between people and the, the, the kindness that people show to one another and the effort that can be made to improve people's lives, to improve the, improve the, the workings of everything that's touched it's it's like the it's like the power of of this uh, little mm -hmm. object. Um, you you gotta keep you gotta keep going. You've gotta keep asking the right questions. You have to go. We have to go in the right direction. And um, the, there were a lot of things. There are things that are decried in it. Uh, certainly, the Republican uh, attitude. Um, certainly. The corruption of business power is decried, uh, and there is, there are substitutes that Jonathan makes mm -hmm. that uh, are are elevating our possible solutions that that change things. And when when back in the in the fifties at Berkeley, all we talked about were change mm -hmm. agents and how. How you can be a good one, and 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 it seems to be coming back now. It uh, sure things. does. <laughs> it sure, it's exactly what it, it, um, so. So his books speak to very much to what the world is going on. He was an environmentalist before in, before environmentalism became uh, something that was so important mm -hmm. to us. Uh, he. he um, and he made the, he made these things happen, and I just uh, it's it's well it's well worth uh, somebody that doesn't know his writing to go ahead start with 
um, start with uh, with uh, Gloucester um, Gloucester book Gloucester. Gloucester's book yeah yeah start with that yeah and read Gilgamesh because that's fascinating. Mm -hmm. I just have, I mean, we just have a few minutes left, so I just wanted to say I, I did have the opportunity to write a little uh, essay uh, telling a story of, you know, encountering John on different occasions. Yes. I, I had some uh, interactions with him, uh, and the one that I wrote about, and maybe you have some story uh, you can tell also in the, in the brief time we have remaining, was going uh, over to his house. Uh, uh, this is shortly before he passed away, yeah. and uh, trying to do a, a, a filming uh, with Henry Farini uh, uh, for the uh, Polis's this documentary about Charles Olson. And of course, because he was in that milieu with Olson, we wanted to get his thoughts about the poet. And uh, But here it was, uh, we set up our uh, uh, equipment mm -hmm. and we uh, started to uh, film asking John if he could uh, recollect some of his experiences. Yeah. And he wouldn't do it because uh, he knew that his memory wasn't serving him well at that point in time and that it, instead of trying to uh, recollect things that were difficult to recollect mm -hmm. he, he rather not do it at all because he didn't want to give that uh, false impressions yeah. or uh, sort of a, a misunderstood uh, uh, recall so it was very interesting for someone uh, like himself to yeah. have the presence of mind to know not only what they knew, but what they'd forgotten. Yeah. And that by uh, retelling a story in fragments that were not easily mm -hmm. connected, mm -hmm. that it wasn't serving any purpose. So he demurred, and it turns out that that probably was a good thing. And I think John had a great sense of uh, you know, his self, uh, where he stood at, various points in his life. Did you have any uh, yeah. experiences uh, with well, him? Well, I certainly share that. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm 89 and, and uh, I, um, uh, I, I find that happening all the time, although I'm still working hard. Um, but it, it was, uh, I, just, I just gotta say that with Jonathan's uh, Navy experience, with, with his teaching experience, with his business uh, acumen, uh, with his relationship with his family, his relationship with his friends, that all of that put together, he made a incredible contribution to the betterment of, the, of Gloucester and the betterment of the world, really. And that's the, that's the power of his writings, is that is that successful endeavor. Well, thank you. I think that's a good place actually to uh, end on. And uh, if we can, uh, let's do that. And I want to thank you again for uh, sharing those experiences. And I uh, hope and encourage folks to, uh, to pick up uh, one of these books at yeah. some point and uh, uh, go for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Terrific. Thank you so much, Kenny. Thanks, Jay. It was wonderful. Thank you, Jay. Thanks, folks.